Take 14. Is your life kind of complicated? Welcome to One Take, the podcast designed to seek wisdom to live simple, healthy, and happy. We'll get there one take at a time. I'm your host, Jasmine Thomas. Welcome to Take 14 of One Take, the podcast. I am your host, Jasmine Thomas, and I am, as always, so happy that you are joining me today. I have to thank you for your patience because if you listen to my previous podcast, you know that I decided to start publishing on a bi-weekly basis. And if you did not listen, I'll give you some of the reasons why. I am back uh, coaching my daughter's volleyball team. So that requires some time. And I am also starting a new job. And I want to make sure that I'm focused in learning everything that I have to learn for my new, my new adventure, my new chapter in my life. And this is basically going to be the topic of this podcast, the change that I've decided to make uh, career wise. And I'm basically going to title it something like, are you feeling burnt out at work? How to find your next dream job. I usually don't determine the title of my podcasts and my uh, blog posts till I'm done writing. And I think that's pretty much what it's going to be like. So if it changes, you know, you know, I'm always changing things, making them better. But Big news for you guys. Um, if, if you've been following me only through the podcast, a lot of you guys are my friends and I appreciate you guys listening and your time. And I really appreciate you asking me about the podcast because I was uh, pleasantly surprised that you guys were wondering where my episode was last weekend. And to some of you, I, I told you guys and, and, and you knew this wasn't coming on a weekly basis for now. And I was happy that you guys were asking me because that means that some people care about it and it's worth doing it. And and I'm happy about that. But I had been talking to you guys and some of my friends about feeling burnt out at work and about not being happy. And if you um, if you actually see it on my on my podcasts, I've been expressing to you guys how I've been making some changes. I've been trying to take control of the direction of the decisions that I make of how I treat my days and my weeks and what I want for my future. And for some time, I had been feeling burned out at work. And today I want to share with you that experience because if you're going through that, it's no fun. And I want you to know there's a better way to be living your life and to be building your career than not being happy at your place of employment or with the job that you're doing. And actually, the research and the stats say that most people are not happy at their jobs, whether it's because they don't like the pay, they don't like the people they work for, they don't like what they're doing. The fact of the matter is they are not happy. And if there's something that I've been talking about is when, when we are going through situations in our lives that we do not like, it is only in our own willpower to change those situations. Yes, some of those are due to factors beyond our control, but we can control our approach, our reaction, and the way we deal with such situations. So... Giving you some of some background because not everyone that listens to this podcast, of course, knows me or goes back uh, in time with me. Um, I've been working in the television industry for 17 years, Um, 10 and a half of those years with the same company that I just left yesterday. So I am recording these March 18th. 2017. Yesterday, March 17 of 2017 was my last 
my last day at Telemundo, um, Hispanic television station. Ten years, guys. It it's it sounds easy. It said easy, but it's a lifetime. My son just turned ten. It's a lifetime. And if you want to know a little bit about my son Zach, you can listen to the previous episode. Um, he was my my special guest for that episode. 17 years in television, 10 years with the same company. Not many people um, stay for that long in one company. Um, I know people that stay for 30, 40 years. Yes, they, they exist and they happen. A lot learned. I don't think I'm the same person, but I think I am a better person than the one that started. And why did I want to leave my job after 10 years? It's funny because... I'll tell you a couple of stories today. Not too long ago, maybe about about a month ago, I had a request from a friend that wanted um, to ask me for a favor. A friend of hers, somebody that I didn't know that worked on radio, uh, was looking to get into the television uh, business. And he was going to be in town attending other meetings. And he, he wanted to get a tour of the station. And I'm like, sure, yeah, tell him to come over. And so he comes and I start telling him about this amazing building that, you know, everything's state of the art. Uh, We moved in two and a half years ago, probably. It's beautiful. The studios are amazing. Cameras are robotic. You know, the lighting is beautiful. Everything is amazing in this place. And as we are walking around, he's taking pictures and he's, I don't know if he's posting online or something. But it almost seemed like he was more interested in posting stuff or taking pictures or tweeting or something on the phone than on the actual tour. And I was like, okay. And then he asked me, how long have you been here? And I'm like, uh, 10 years. And then he go he goes, the assumption that many people make. He's like, oh, wow, you're going to retire from here, right? And I'm thinking, you know... I just smiled at him and I'm thinking, uh, probably not. And what he didn't know, you know, he didn't know me. So he didn't know that I had been going through a, a process of looking for my next step in my career. I grew up watching my dad working in television. When I decided to go to college, um, first I was going to s- study marketing until math It just started getting a little too complicated for for me. You know, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. So after one semester in marketing, I decided to start communications. And that's what I did. And I really enjoyed it. And my sister was studying the same thing. So I was helping her with uh, some video projects. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. I want to direct videos. I want to create videos. I want to do video and TV stuff. That's exactly how I want to express myself. That's what I want to do. So I did know from a, from an early stage that I enjoyed creating videos and stories and telling stories. It helped that my dad was in the business because I can work with, with him, for him, and I could also see how he did things and learn from that. Later on, I moved to the States and I was given one of those opportunities where a friend of a friend of a friend knows somebody that was hiring someone to start a news channel in Spanish in Wichita, Kansas, of all places. And I got the job. I was going to an interview, you know. I I hadn't done news before, but I was going to the interview after watching a bunch of newscasts and taking notes and kind of figuring everything out from the production side because what I had been doing wasn't news, but was TV production. So I go to the interview. This guy came from California, was looking for somebody to run his TV station. He was starting. I mean, it was a startup. And I meet with him. I thought it was a job interview, but there was no interview. I had sent him my demo DVD, which DVDs back then were like, wow. So maybe I wow him with my DVD and not a VHS tape. And he offered me the job. He said, you're going to be the news director 
and you're going to create a Spanish TV newscast and I am going to pay you $3,000. I was like, what? He's going to pay me $3,000? Wow. I mean, back then I was like, whoa, I'm bringing home the bucks. This is so much money. You know, I, I, I was hoping he would want to pay me <laughs> or I was hoping he would want to pay me at least $2,000. You know, I was used to making the minimum wage, which was five fifteen then. So this was quite the, the upgrade for me, this salary. And so that's how it started. That's how my, my adventure in the world of TV news started. And now fast forward, 2017, I am making the transition. And why is it that I'm making the transition? Basically, because I didn't feel like I could do my job with excellence anymore, if, if I could summarize it. And of course, there's, there's too much behind that. But things have changed in television. Um, social media has really put pressure on television stations and television executives and news directors and everyone in the newsroom because... Television has changed forever. The way people are consuming news is just not through TV only anymore. You know, it used to be print and then there's TV and then there's radio. And now social media and smartphones have everyone dancing around because everyone goes to social media basically first. So now there's this need in the newsrooms to beat Facebook and to beat Twitter and to beat social media and to be here and there. And I feel that in the pursuit of beating Facebook and beating Twitter and beating Pinterest and beating social media, there's a lot that has been lost in the newsroom and in television production and in news production. So I think I saw how things were changing in the newsroom and I was never really happy about the way changes were implemented to be able to compete with that fast-moving world of social media. Not that I didn't want to simulate the change. I just felt that the essence of journalism was missing. I felt like journalism... True, pure journalism was taking second place to the pursuit of the viewer. And that's one of the factors that started making me feel not really happy about working in television news. That was just one factor. There's factors that you cannot control. And as these changes are happening the way we cover the news is happening too because now we have to be everywhere trying to beat the other stations because you want it to always be first. And I think this I can generalize at least in local news. Sometimes the quality of the stories is put second to the quantity. I think stations want more, regardless of the quality. And that for me is hard to, to do because I'm always a quality first person. I want my stories to be the best that they can be with my abilities, with the time and the resources that I have available. And it was hard for me to see that the expectations were to do more stories regardless of the quality. And that for me was a pill that I tried to swallow, but I was really never able to. I was never able to put quality second. Because if you think about it, for us, people who work on television, the audience doesn't know what happens behind the scenes. What they know is that you have a reporter that's going on camera presenting you a news story. 
And whether you think that's a great story or that's the worst story ever, you are going to relate that story with the face that presented the story. So I got to a point that I felt like I was presenting stories that were not up to my standards because I had to fill a quota of stories. And that to me, it was, it was not working for me. That to me, you should never, as a journalist, sacrifice the quality of the story, the quality of the content the viewer or the reader is going to have available just for the sake of having more stories. But that's the struggle. That's the struggle that I don't want to say every local news station is facing, but many local news stations and television stations and radio stations too. That's a huge challenge, and there's not enough resources. This is the story of every news newsroom. There are not enough resources to do all the jobs and all the coverage that's necessary. And so what happens? Well, we, we, we leave the load on the team that we have, and we increase the expectations on the volume of news production, But then in the end, in the long run, people notice the quality is going down. So they say that as a journalist, your most precious asset is your reputation. And I felt like I had worked so hard to build a reputation, not just for the sake of a reputation, because that's, that's what I expect, expect of myself to do excellent work. And I felt like, I was having to lower my own standards that I worked so hard to build with my stories for the sake of filling the quota, meeting the quota. And uh, I, it wasn't sitting well with me. That's when I decided that I needed to take a close look at where my career was going because knowing that the values of the environment where I work are not aligned with my personal and professional values, that was a huge sign for me that I needed to start studying ways to use my resources, my knowledge, my skills, my abilities, my experience, my wisdom into create other forms to serve people, to serve my audience, and to also serve myself by feeling satisfied with the job that I was doing. And that's how it started. I think um, that to me, that's what triggered my burnt out. And I don't think I, I was ever able to recover. I used to be the reporter that fought for the stories. And I became the reporter that didn't want to fight for them. Huge red flag just here recently. And I, I want to tell you guys this story because I think it's that was the day that I realized that I needed to move on. I know some people don't like you leaving the media, especially people who work in the media for a long time in television. I don't feel like I'm leaving because there's so many resources that I have available. I have a, a podcast. I have a blog where I can write into detail about the topics that I want to, that I'm curious about, that I feel need to be told. So I don't feel like I'm leaving media or the world of news. I mean, I won't be on TV, but you know what? I was never on TV to be on TV. I was never the reporter that wanted to be on TV because I was so vain. I wanted to see myself on TV. If anything, I think I am brighter behind the scenes than on the scenes. I mean, I think time brings experience, but I could be just as happy working behind the scenes in the media or in television that on camera. You know, I'm not a, I wasn't in it because I wanted to be on TV and be, be looked at on the, at the store and be recognized by the viewers and ask for my autograph or any of that. I was never in it because of that. If anything... That's one thing that I, I do not like. I don't like to be recognized when I'm in public because 
I don't know. It's, it's uncomfortable. But anyway, this was the day that I knew that I had to move on. And this is the story of that day. I had just come back home from work. You know, I was getting the kids ready. We had dinner. You know, they had to go get in the shower, check homeworks, this and that. So around 9 o'clock, that's when, when I, I try to get them to sleep earlier, but 9 o'clock, it's, it's a good day. So I'm, I'm putting my son to sleep, and my, my, my husband starts calling at me from the living room. He's like, come here, come here, you, you have to come and see this. And I've heard that before, and it was the last time that a new Star Wars promo was on the air, and I'm like, whatever, I'll be there in a minute. You know, I'm thinking there's going to be another Star Wars Rogue One promo on the air, commercial. So I put my kids down. And he's watching TV and he's glued to the TV and I can see he's upset. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, you have to see this. So I sit down and I start watching TV and it's, um, and it's on Fox, the local Fox station around nine o'clock. And what I can see, it's this reporter saying what's going on on the field as he's hiding behind a truck and there's gunfire going on around like we are in Fallujah or somewhere and I'm thinking what's going on he's like this is in Dallas and this had been the night there was going to be supposedly a peaceful protest now there's gunshots going on everywhere well I was sitting there watching this and I'm thinking this is just not good I had a really bad feeling Number one, I've never seen any of that in my career. I had this heaviness inside of me. I had one side of my brain telling me, you need to grab the phone right now and you need to call your boss, which is what reporters are used to do when, they're, when there's breaking news. You know, they have to report to make sure they have enough people or to if they need people so you can go in back to work. And here I am sitting on the couch thinking, I just came from work. I, 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 you know, I'm exhausted. It was a Thursday night. There's gunshots going on on TV. And all I can see is that all I can remember of me is holding on to my phone, like, like holding it hard and knowing that I had to place a call to call my boss to ask if they needed me to come back to work. And I didn't. Instead, I was watching the coverage, flipping from channel to channel, and then I waited for 10 o'clock, and then I saw that people from my station were over there. I'm like, okay, so they got it covered, but I just couldn't go to sleep. I kept watching this and watching this. Then the news came. There was one officer down. The moment I heard that, I knew I needed to go back to work. At that time... I didn't know what was going on. We later found out, as you guys may remember, July 7th, 2016, five police officers were ambushed in downtown Dallas and killed. And the night when the city that I work in needed me to be there covering the news, I didn't place the call. The one night of the year that I should have made the call right away, I didn't. I didn't know what was going on again when I had not placed the call. I just knew that I did not want to go. I didn't want to go and be there. That's wrong. That's really wrong. When you don't want to go and do your job, the night that turns out to be the most tragic, probably in the history or the latest 40 years of the history of Dallas. And I didn't want to show up for work. Something big was wrong with me that night. And then finally the phone rang, of course, because I did not place a call. And I was asked to go back to work. And we covered the story. And I remember going into this meeting at one or two in the morning. 
And I just remember praying. By this time, we knew there were several officers that had been killed. And I remember sitting at the meeting and just praying, please, please do not assign me to go knock on the doors of the officers' family members. Please don't, don't, don't assign me to that story. Please do not, do not, do not. And God listened to me. And he did not assign me to that story. He assigned me to go to the hospital and report from the hospital. And we stayed on the story, obviously, for a long time. And I just could not understand what was going on because when you're working when you're working in news you get used to covering tragedies but i had never been prepared to cover a tragedy like this i didn't know what to do i didn't know what to feel i knew i was depressed and i didn't want to be there but i had to be there so i was resentful of the fact that i couldn't just like anybody else in the city mourn I had to work. And they send us an email to the people at work saying that they were going to bring in counselors for us to talk to. Well, I was angry about that too because the counselors were coming when we are assigned to cover the stories. So we cannot even, if we wanted, go and talk to the counselors. They, they bring them in every time there's like a tragedy or something really bad going on, they bring him over to the news station, which tells you what kind of place I work in. It was an, it's an amazing company. It is an amazing company. Telemundo, NBC, Universal is an amazing company. And I will forever have chills when I watch a Universal movie because I was part of it. The company itself, best company I've ever worked for. So having said that, knowing that I don't have the passion or the drive to do my job, feeling pretty depressed, one of those days, I think I was, you get exhausted from not sleeping and just the nature of the the coverage we're doing, like wall to wall, day and night, covering the story. The emotions. One day, um, I decided that I was going to go talk to the counselors because earlier that day, I was sitting at my desk and I was feeling really sad because it, it wasn't another day at the job for me. It wasn't another day in the newsroom. Usually, after I went to cover tornadoes, um, fatal accidents, fires, shootings, stabbings, you name it. I covered them all. I was fine the next day. This was different. I wasn't fine. I was feeling pretty depressed. And one day I was sitting at my desk and people were coming and going, you know, living the normal day. And I I remember feeling like this isn't normal for me anymore. This doesn't feel right. And I was really sad and I just wanted to cry at my desk, but I didn't want anyone to see me because reporters were not supposed to cry, right? We're supposed to be objective. We're not supposed to get involved into the emotion of the stories. And here I was feeling like I just wanted to cry. Like I didn't want to be part of it. This was a really sad day for the city. And it wasn't another day at the office for me. So what I did, I left the office and I went to the parking lot and I started walking around and I started crying. And there were people coming in, you know, because people coming at different times. And I'm like, I don't want anyone to see me crying. So I go and I hide behind my car and I, I sit on the sidewalk and I start crying like a baby. I'm just crying and crying and crying. And then suddenly, as I'm feeling relieved, I start hearing this noise. I'm like, what in the world? Well, turns out the groundskeeper decided that he was going to start blowing leaves in the parking lot. 
and he runs into me. As I am hiding behind my car, crying, he runs into me. I'm, I'm thinking, this guy probably thinks that I'm going to steal somebody's tires or something. So I'm like, okay, this is the end of this moment. I go back into the station, and I go straight into the counselor's office because I was hesitant to go because I had never been. Out of all the times that they bring in the counselors, I had never been. And I go in and I ask, he's available. He's like, of course. And, you know, they don't ask your name. They don't ask anything. You just talk. I'm like, well, how does this work? He's like, you just talk. It's totally anonymous. You just talk. And I just started crying with him. And I'm like, listen, I am really sad. You know, I'm supposed to be a reporter. I'm supposed to have it all together. I'm supposed to be objective. I'm supposed to be not emotional. And I'm like, I can't. And I told him, I don't want to go and knock on another door ever again. I don't want to have to be assigned to go find the family members of anybody that has died in a tragedy. I said, I cannot do that job anymore. I cannot do it. I just couldn't get over it. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And he's like, maybe it's time for you to start looking about other ways to fulfill your career. And it was like I had just drank water from a magic fountain because I never thought that somebody would have empathy for what I was saying and would tell me that it was okay to consider leaving the industry that I had been working on for so many years. So here in my sadness, this counselor, that's, that, duh, that's what they do for a living, right? This counselor opens my eyes and my mind to the option of not having to do this job anymore. And I feel really bad admitting it because the circumstances in which this realization happened are so terrible. Here I am whining and complaining about not wanting to do my job when there are five officers that even if they wanted, they couldn't do their jobs anymore. How can someone do that? How could I complain about not wanting to reach out to the family members of the fallen officers when the officers are not here anymore to do their job? It just didn't, it wasn't right. I just feel like this isn't right. I should be wanting to do my job more than ever because I have one and because I have an opportunity. But that day, July 7th, 2016, I came to turn terms with the decision that it was time for me to move on. To what? I wasn't sure. But the burnout followed by this tragedy, it was clear to me, I cannot do this job with excellence anymore. Regarding the things that I can control and the changes that I cannot control that were causing my burnout. (sighs) And that's how I decided that it was time. I had been looking for some time, you know, not very seriously, very cautiously, just looking because I wasn't sure. But that day, it became my objective to find a new job where I could serve people with excellence. That's all I really wanted to do. And that's all I really want to do. I'm not somebody that's in it because of the paycheck. Because I had a paycheck and I didn't like what I was doing and I was pretty unhappy. So it is clear to me that you cannot work for the paycheck. And if you can, show us how because I haven't been able to figure that out. This is what I wanted to share with you guys because once you come into your own career when you hit the wall, when you, when you arrive to a point where you feel like you cannot do what you've been doing with excellence, 
you're not proud of what you're doing, you don't feel like you're going anywhere. It's only within you to change that. You may not have a situation like I had where there was a tragedy that triggered me to really analyze what I was doing. Maybe if that day had not happened, I would still be there in my job, but just doing my job because I've been doing it for 10 years and because the friend of a friend that asked me to give him a tour at the station told me, are you going to retire from here? I saw people that retired from there that for the last three or four years walked like zombies. They weren't there anymore. I don't want to be that person. I want to be there. So how do you get your next dream job? You dream about it, of course. Number one, you dream about it and you prepare yourself for it. And something that I realized that I want to share with you guys now, it's not what you're doing right now what's going to get you your next big job or your next dream job. It's what you already did. I don't think I got the job that I'm about to start on Monday because of the resume that I said that I sent out one day last year. I don't think that resume got me the job. I think what got me the job was everything that I had been building on for the last 15 to 17 years career-wise. Because my job is very public, people knew what I stood for, people could see my stories, people could get an idea of what kind of person I was. People talk. Every interview, every interaction, every person I met left a mark. And you never know when the person that you're talking to today will be the person that will recommend you for a job tomorrow. You never know. That's why this becomes a daily habit. Every single day today, you're building your opportunities for tomorrow. Because tomorrow, when you need a job and you send out the resumes, the resume is not going to get you the job. What you've been building on previously is what's going to get you the job. I truly believe that the opportunity that was given to me, which was more than I could ever expect, and I'll tell you more in a minute, was not the result of a piece of paper. This was the result of years and years of hard work, ethic, principles that I applied, that I believe in, and that I apply to my daily life at work. I am 100% sure about that. But was that the only factor that influenced in me getting my new job? No. I look at myself and I, I started thinking, okay, what is it that you want to do? Where is it that you want to transition into? And I started making a, a list of things that I could do or I wanted to do. From being an entrepreneur to transitioning out of the news world. And then I started looking at the resumes not, not the resumes, the job descriptions of those positions that I was interested in. And so looking and studying those job descriptions, I was able to pinpoint my weaknesses and work on them. This podcast is just one example of what I did. I didn't just start a podcast just because everyone has a podcast. It's a good reason, right? Why not? Hey, you want to do it? Do it. Everyone has one. Everyone has a car payment too. That's not the point. I started the podcast because I wanted to challenge myself and my fears because I've always worked in Hispanic media. And speaking English always came second. Now, I've made it my purpose to become the best speaker that I can be. And what better way to do it than to put yourself out there? This, what you guys hear today, it's not a scripted. What's a scripted? The only, my notes on my notepad here. That's my notepad. Feeling burnt out at work, how to find your next dream job. That's what I wrote 
because I liked the sound of that for the title. And if you don't write down a good idea, it disappears. Boom, it goes. What else did I do? I went online and I probably signed up to take maybe five online classes on different things. I took a six-week or was it four-week um, online course on podcasting. I took a course on writing a book. Things that I wanted to try one day because one day I will write a book. I just started taking different online classes. I started reading a lot. Things that I was interested in, like leadership. I am really interested in working with people that I want to be like when I grow up, you know? I want to be able to look up to the people that I work with and tell the world, I want to be like you. I want to be like them. So I started reading a lot of books about leadership, how to treat, it, treat people right, how to set a good example. I started listening to a lot of podcasts on leadership because I wanted to prepare myself for the next opportunity. Because guys, you may have an amazing opportunity knocking at your door today. And guess what? You're not going to see it because you're not ready. You need to be ready today for tomorrow's opportunities. You need to start working on today the things that you feel are your weaknesses. Because the day that opportunity knocks on the door, it's going to pass by you because you're not going to be ready. You're not going to be confident. You're not going to be secure of yourself. You're not going to be able to pursue that opportunity. And believe me, this opportunity that arrived to me, it's more than I had expected. I received the gift to become the director of communications and marketing for a local nonprofit organization that has such a noble objective that I cannot, I cannot wait to start. We are going to be working on literacy programs for kids and their families. So all this time I had been wanting to do stories to empower and inform people so that they could make better decisions and have a better quality of life. Guess what? I get to still do all of that in a different place. I get to serve the community that I live in. I get to grow. I get to work with people that are among the elite leadership in my city. I get to work with people that I want to be like when I grow up. And if I had not been preparing myself, probably I would have gone to the interview and they would be like, yeah, you know, thank you for coming because it wasn't my, my time. But I was ready for this. I didn't know this was going to happen, but I knew I was getting myself ready for something big because I believe that when you focus your resources on serving people, you get much more out of it. I believe that empowering people with information, education, is the best avenue for growth. And I get to do that now. I get to see the community that I live in becoming a better place. So now I get to use my skills, my experience, my resources to empower people to be better. If there was something that I really enjoyed about my job in television news, was sharing information with people that they could use to have a better life, to make better decisions. I still get to do that. In a different environment, with different people, in a position that's going to challenge me, I, I still cannot believe this. And this can happen for you too, but you must want it and you must search for it and you must prepare yourself. If you're not happy with the work that you're doing right now, you need to seriously analyze what's not making you happy. You need to go over the things that you can control and the things that you cannot control. You need to analyze what are the skills 
that you are lacking to be where you want to be. If there's people around the office that you go like, I want to be like them, I want to do what they do, go talk to them. If they're not in the office, if they are somewhere else, maybe they're famous, maybe they have books and they have podcasts and blogs. Read, listen to them, see what they are doing. There's no reason why they are there and you couldn't be there. You can be there. But you have to work for it. A lot of people just sit back and, you know, feel sorry about their situation and do nothing. And they live miserable just complaining every single day of their lives. Other people don't listen to the complaints and take action. My message for you today, if you're feeling burned out at work, take action. How do you find your dream job? This is silly. And I'm going to say it. You look for it. You prepare for it. You study what your dream job looks like, and you prepare for that. And if you don't have all the skills that your dream job requires, you go on Google or YouTube, and you Google it or YouTube it, and you learn it. There is nothing that I have done in the last five years that I could not have learned on YouTube. I learned how to podcast on YouTube. I learned how to do blogging on YouTube. I learned how to uh, do CMS, programming, all on YouTube. Everything is out there. Everything is available to you. All you need to do is want it so bad that you're willing to work for it. It takes work. It takes time. I would say give it a, at least a year to start preparing yourself, and then you will see how the opportunity is going to present itself. And you're going to be ready for it. It takes work. It doesn't happen overnight. But you make it happen. You make it happen. So if you're not happy, change it. If you're feeling burned out, you can change it. And don't worry about what other people say about you. Just worry about what your heart is telling you. And if you're not happy, you shouldn't live unhappy. And you shouldn't drag your feet to a job that you don't like. You should seek for wisdom through books. Talk to people. Talk to friends. Talk to your pastor. Whatever it is, seek out for information. This podcast, this has been a journey for me. I've interviewed from Pastor Thomas to very successful entrepreneurs to very successful female entrepreneurs that were once kicked out of their jobs, to people that decided to quit their jobs to pursue their dream of traveling. All the topics on my podcasts, all the topics of my podcasts are nothing but me seeking for answers to the questions that I have. Anybody can do it. You can do it. You can do it on your own terms. You know, I did a podcast. Okay. You can just talk to people. You can read. But my wish for you is to be happy doing your job and not to dread going to work. And I can tell you, it can be done. You need to be prepared. And it's all in your hands, guys. But that's the message I have for you guys today. I start a new chapter. I'm excited. Oh, I breathe deeply because I just share a, a lot of stuff with you guys. But I appreciate your time. It's time to go for me. I'll be back in two weeks. Remember, you can always uh, check the show and the other shows and the show notes on my um, blog. That would be www.yasminthomas.com. And you can connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Those are my main uh, social media channels that I use. You can find me at Yasmin Thomas. And um, till the next time, guys... Don't forget, just keep it simple. I'm going to talk to you on the next take.